box time. Hello everybody and welcome back. This box arrived here courtesy of geekbuying.com and inside the box is an Ender 3 version 3 SE and believe it or not a lot of the things that have been featured on my channel are actually from geek buying and I was really surprised when they contacted me and asked me would you like to review something because I thought they already had my name and address but they came around anyway and uh, I'm really interested in taking a look at what is inside this box because believe it or not I have never never ever reviewed a Creality product and uh, this will be my first time so let's have a look so the Ender 3 is of course just an Ender 3 uh, but Creality has been um, really up to the task of modernizing and uh, keeping the series going and the version 3 is uh, a very good example of that because it's basically the same thing that it's been before uh, they just keep on making it better they upgrade the hardware they upgrade the extruder they upgrade the electronic boards so um it's a it's a really nice product uh and it's it was always good and they kept on making it better and, and sometimes not uh but uh, let's have a look in here i'm pretty sure that this will be a treat to set up and uh, it will probably run very very well and it will be um, very easy to work with so we have in the box an instruction manual English and Chinese we have a, a European power cord we have a display with a knob we have a spool holder solid no bearings we have a stepper of some sort oh no we don't that was it that was everything on layer one so let's move down on layer two we get the whole upper frame z-axis x-axis the y-axis is uh, part of the printer um, this will probably lift up um, in one piece uh, we have a belt that drives the second z-axis which is very good um, because it makes it very easy to set everything up get everything perfectly in line and as long as that uh, belt doesn't skip and it's a timing belt it won't it won't skip just like that um, everything is always perfectly lined up and uh, as long as you don't bump the 3d printer or something really unexpected happens uh, this thing will remain perfectly set up for a very long time and uh, yeah that is one of the things that i like a lot because leveling a printer really well can be an extreme time intensive job so let's lift this out here we go and that's it very cool um, here we have the extruder 
This is a direct drive extruder and uh, it's been updated a number of times. Uh, it still has the um, profile and V track uh, uh, V roller rails. Um, I'm not I'm not a great fan of those, but um, they do work. And uh, if if everything um, that holds them together is metal and you don't have any plastic shims, then that will also work for a very long time. Uh, just don't leave it uh, standing in the sun for a summer and expect it to work perfectly after that. Um, we have the x-axis stepper with uh, two bearings um, for keeping the uh, belt tightened around the pulley. Um, yeah, that is a very good design. Um, it's very simple, but it works well. We also see that we have a level probe, uh, which is um, a touch probe that is uh, magnetic. And that is probably going to do a really good job of setting up the printer automatically. Let's continue on downwards. Where do I put this? Going down, we have more packing material. This is... the packing is excellent. I mean, there were times when the only one making packaging like that were very expensive computer companies. Um, in the meantime, uh, a lot of companies uh, have learned that having excellent packing is a real cost saver. And uh, it's a lot more fun to get stuff out of there. So here we have the base. Everything is on here, so uh, setting up the the entire gantry with uh, the uh, Z and X axis should be very simple. We do have, uh, I don't know what this is or and if it's supposed to look like this. It looks kind of wonky. I'll check that if this is uh, the way it should be with the power cable and to the heated print bed but uh, yeah I'll clean up the desk and I'll put everything there and bring you back then okay we got a thing on the table we have the instruction manual and uh, putting it together is <laughs> Extremely simple. Fasten six screws to the profile on the bottom. Mount the spool holder. Attach the ribbon cable and the stepper driver cable. And after that, attach the display. That's it, you're done. Um, yeah, it doesn't get any more user-friendly than this, except when you buy a fully assembled printer. And I think even those come with more screws to fix than this one. Um, looking at the contents of the bag, let's see what we have. We have a reasonable amount of filament. Honestly, don't even use that. Get a roll of filament and start working with that because this stuff, it's, you can use it for testing, but you're going to run out before you have a real print finished. And um, it's, it's more of a hassle changing the filament than just getting a real roll of filament and working from that. 
Yeah. We also get a bag with a second nozzle. That's nice. We get some screws. We get a uh, USB stick and an SD card. We get two more bags of screws. Oh, we get a whole set of tools. And uh, those are way more tools that, than we need to put it together. But these are probably all the tools that we need if we have to take it apart to fix it. And uh, oh yeah, that's a nice tool set. Not bad. And I mean, this is where you, this is where you get a glimpse of the, um, huh, of the experience that Creality has. They know what you're going to need. And we have, whoops, I don't know what that is. Oh, I know what that is. Yes. This is a set of wire cutters and they are they're pretty good. You can you can use them for cutting your filament and and for for cutting cable ties. Um, what I'm not seeing is and I wish it would have been here was a set of tweezers because tweezers are always great um, for getting the filament off your uh, nozzle things like that so yeah looking into the extruder head um, it looks very solid uh, we have a reasonable uh, cooler on the on the extruder it seems to be a metal throat in here I don't know if it's full metal or if there's PTFE inside uh, we have a big heater block a really big heater block and yeah this looks very solid uh, this is uh, that's a far cry from uh, what we had before and uh, yeah also all of the cables are connected through one connector so as long as it doesn't break it is a lot simpler than having a lot of cables great um, I'm gonna put this thing together and then we'll check it out Okay, while we have it here, uh, we can have a short look at the bottom and we see that we see absolutely nothing. There are no big openings in the bottom of here. Uh, there's a fan inlet. I think there might be a second fan there. So uh, one of them is the controller board. The other one is the power supply. And uh, we can actually see some sort of air vent here. And I suppose that is where it's going to pull in uh, cold air. Very easy, very simple. And also, the top, uh, no openings, very closed. Actually, super tidy. And uh, I like it that way. And looking at it from the back, that is where we install the stepper driver cable and this is also where we thread the cable for the z-axis stepper and they want us to actually put this perfectly in here this might be hard to 
two. Well, let's see if we can manage. And we have the stepper driver cable. So I think that was one of the uh, fastest setups that I've ever done. Uh, let's check it. So I have my little angle meter here, uh, which is on zero to the table. I'm just going to put it on the working surface here. Uh, and the table is absolutely flat. That is great. And I'm going to put it right onto the X axis. And that is very nearly flat, maybe a little bit, maybe a little bit up on that side, but very, very, very little. And the top, once again, is perfect. Okay, so same procedure in the Y direction. Let's try this again. You're not going to see this, just believe me. Oh. Well, that is not good. In fact, that's not good at all. Let's, uh, let's see if this is something went wrong. Yeah, better. Uh, so it was <laughs> my uh, my mat is not entirely flat. This thing is uh, past its best. So um, the table is perfectly flat in uh, both dimensions. Um, the gantry up here is uh, pretty much um, parallel to the working surface. So. Let's get some power and turn it on and see if we can zero it. Power, power, power. We need power. Okay. So we have power. We turn it on and Well, we get a menu on the screen. I'll get you in there. So let's remove this. Okay. And select English. That's it. Wait, that's it. Maybe we go for control and we go for motion. I don't think that's where we want to go. Let's go for prepare. Let's let's do an auto home and see what happens. It's actually moving all the axes. I 
Okay, it's bringing down the Z axis. And I don't know if you can see this, the little tab from the probe is extended now. And it's uh, now trying to touch the table to find its zero position. And here we go. Probe retracts. For the test print, I'm just using a little bit of uh, Prima Value um, PLA in black. And uh, threading the <laughs> the filament is pretty simple. Um, pull back the tab, insert the filament all the way, and you're done. That's it. Now, there is a USB-C right here and uh, we have an SD card slot on the side of the uh, device itself. Um, it takes a full-size SD card and I think that's a pretty good idea because you don't lose the, these as easily as you lose the small ones. Uh, there is also an SD card slot on the display, uh, but that one is only used when you're updating the display. And I am having... And it ratchets when you insert it. So let's see if there's anything printable on there. So let's try this auto leveling again because my SD card just quit. So we go for leveling and uh, it does everything by itself. Um, it zeros. It's uh, going to heat the nozzle once it's zeroed. So right now it's actually moving the extruder down to the print bed. And it's trying to find its zero position. Okay. There we go. That was it. Now it goes to the absolute home position. And uh, right now the display is telling us that it is heating the nozzle, which should take a couple of minutes. And then it goes through this really, really funky <laughs> calibration dance where it measures the surface of the build platform and somehow also measures and corrects the offset between the sensor and the nozzle. This is the absolute simplest way of setting up a 3D printer that I have ever seen myself. And uh, granted, I do build them myself and my printers don't have that feature, but if this is the future, then I like it. So, the extruder is coming up to temperature now. And uh, let's see it do the calibration dance. So, three minutes into the calibration, we're still heating up. I'm really curious how long this is going to take. Four minutes and it's done heating the nozzle.
So it's now cleaning and uh, wiping the nozzle. And yeah, did that. And now it does the calibration dance. I think it's actually touching the print bed with the nozzle. It must be able to somehow notice that it touches it. <laughs> really curious. Maybe the SE stands for super easy. Oh, uh, we're now five minutes and uh, 30 seconds into the setup procedure. Yeah, and it's actually moving down and touching the surface. Oh, that's wild. The thing is, my own 3D printers don't really need this because they're, they're all metal parts and once you have the setup for, for height and level, um, it, it doesn't really change over time, it just stays the way it was and uh, I can even use just the normal uh, micro switch for the Z0 end switch and it stays pretty much aligned all the time. So six minutes and 30. I think it's cooling the nozzle now. Maybe letting it cool off. Seven minutes. It's not really doing anything. And now it's returning to zero. And it's zeroed. Ah, now it's doing a leveling where it touches a number of uh, points on the print bed. I would say about 16 in this case. And looking at this, we can actually see the result in the display. Get you. And these values are really interesting. Um, because at the beginning when we were manually measuring, we could see the offset. And uh, it also seems to be present in the build platform itself. Very cool. We are 8 minutes and 45 seconds into the setup procedure. And it's uh, homing once again. Oh, now we get the prompt. Do we want to confirm? 
or edit. No, we'll just confirm. Nine minutes and 15 seconds. We're done setting up the printer. <laughs> no manual labor, no measuring, no paper fiddling or twisting screws. Ha! <laughs> that is pretty amazing. And I mean, this is a sub 200 euro entry printer. This is the way they're supposed to be. This is plug and play, not plug and pray. Or plug and do a lot of work and then hope that it somehow works because maybe you've done it wrong. Okay, I like that. So regarding software, the 3D printer comes with the SD card and on the SD card you get a copy of Creality Print. And uh, in general, I think this is a pretty good tool. Um, there are a lot of things that you can do. There are a lot of things that you can set up and control. Um, but I don't want to get into the discussion about what is the right slicer for your printer, because that is one of the things that you have to find out for yourself. Um, Creality Print is the tool that will get you going. It is easy to use and it does everything that you need. If you want to get deeper into slicers and configuring them and twiddling with them, then there is a world open for you. Uh, you can use Slicer, Skeinforge, Kura. You can use Prusa Slicer. Um, it's just all out there. And I always say, try what you want, try what you need and find out what works for you. Um, maybe you want an all-in-one tool. Um, those are also available. Uh, this thing will get you started. The printer comes with everything you need to get started, to get printing right away. And uh, the tool is very easy to set up. It has uh, predefined setups for all of the printers. Of course, nowadays it comes with a cloud connection and I'm not a fan of that but um, it's just the times. I don't think you can do anything about it. Uh, if you want to get deeper into using the printer and uh, setting it up, I usually go for a Repetier host uh, because it is the um, most open software, I think, um, but there will be people that say different and they're probably right too. So, from the software standpoint, um, I like what you get. Uh, it is perfectly functional. Um, the tools are very, very well put together. Um, you have everything that you need. So get printing. Just go out and do it. If you find something that doesn't work for you or that you want to use different, there's a ton of documentation on all of the tools and all of the things that come with a the printer. They're all on the SD card. Uh, just unpack them and start using them. Um, it's the best way to get going. Just experiment and work. So uh, yeah, that's about the software. I want to keep this short because um, software is just uh, such an open field and there is something for everyone and not everyone likes everything so you get software you get documentation it's all on the SD card that's all I want to say to that so now that it's leveled let's do a print now we have one file on there which is a little cat of some sort and yeah we're not going to calibrate now and we're going to confirm the print okay the 3d printer is prepping I'm going to manually remove what's left of our homing sequence. I don't, I don't think it's going to be a problem, but let's just clean it off. 
So we are going through heating. Um, the print bed is already hot enough from uh, uh, the leveling and um, the nozzle is now coming up to temp temperature. <laughs> and that should go fairly fast. And uh, let's zoom in on where the action is going to happen. Maybe go down a little bit. Okay, we are at temperature. It should start any time now. So it's doing a sort of wipe on the edge of the print bed. I like that. And the wipe um, is absolutely perfect. And uh, what we can see from the print right now It's also pretty much perfect. Yeah, and the printer is so silent. It is so absolutely silent. And it's moving pretty fast too. Okay, we're almost done with the first layer. And we're like at 10 minutes after turning it on for the first time and we're already printing wow and look at it go this is really this is really quick this is possible because we have the uh, we have the direct drive extruder so um, we can actually move really quickly and we can push a lot of filament um, through there. Um, also we have a pretty big um, heating block for the extruder that helps too. So this whole thing is super nice. So let's let this print and see how it goes. So also after some time it starts uh, calculating a remaining time which is probably based on, on the uh, number of the length of extrusion that it's done and uh, the percentage of uh, steps that it's taken. It can probably predict how long it's going to take. So. It's predicting that it will be three hours and 20 minutes until it's done. So um, I'm gonna let this run and then uh, bring you back. This thing is really, really ripping. Um, this is, it's really moving fast for a uh, for a print head that is um, 
so massive that has so many components um, being able to move so quickly and not have any overshoot or any uh, distortion or ringing in the in the object later um, that's no easy feat and like I said this this thing just looks so solid uh, it's so I wouldn't say it's extremely well built because it's, it's still plastic but there's it has some weight to it it feels super super solid um, yeah, yeah at this price point this is way more than I would have expected and it's it's just doing a great job right now let's see what what it ends up with okay the time is over I've already removed this uh, this was on pretty well on the uh, build platform but since you can remove it and uh, carefully bend it it was quite uh, easy to get off so what are we seeing here um, well, first of all you should know that this thing is actually hollow um, for that it turned out really well um, the the layers are um, very nicely defined and uh, we do have a little bit of ringing on the outside but I don't know if that is part of the model it sure looks like it um, here on the edges we have almost no overshoot and we have no ringing at the end this is very nice uh, we do where we have the writing down here we have a little bit of shadow so um, so we have a little bit of vibration caused by the movement of the print bed or the extruder um, that kind of uh, rings on but very good our first layer uh, was actually a pretty much perfect bond well that's why it was so hard to get off and yeah this is yeah this is pretty amazing it really is so I'm going to try and use some of my uh, benchmark prints just to get just to see how exact this printer is but man the result looks good and it was fairly quick too so that's good so I switched filaments and um, I used the blue because the blue doesn't um, bloom up or expand as much as the black does and uh, we can now actually measure the the line width of uh, one um, one bead so let's do that and we're getting 0 0.58 this here's a 0 0.4 millimeter nozzle and uh, because it's going very very slowly um, the filament still expands a little bit but um, that's that's pretty much spot on um, so this should be 20 millimeters wide and where I mean this is just excellent um, the same goes for for this piece this should be 40 millimeters and we're at 4007 I think my battery is dying uh, Wow this is this is super amazing so it's actually hitting all of the of the spots this inside should be um, four millimeters and we're reasonably reasonably close to that uh, the same goes for this here this should be five yeah this is this is pretty much excellent um, also when we look at the uh, surface here this 
and this is just super. There's no ringing, there's no overshoot. And this is... I mean, it doesn't get much better than this. Same here. Uh, we can see that it has some uh, some slight irregularities in there because it actually has to move here. But ha, that is that is a super result. Yeah, honestly, it is. I don't know how close I could get you. This looks very, very nice. Very, very nice. So, huh, I mean, this is probably going to be my shortest review because this thing is just so easy to use. Huh, I don't, I don't really know what to say. I'm, uh, I'm actually amazed. Um, I haven't reviewed uh, the Creality printers for some time, and the old ones were just like the early Prusas, the i3s, and and uh, and stuff like that. Um, once they were set up correctly, they were pretty good, but this thing is just on another level. Last words. This is the printer that I would have loved to start with. It is so easy to work with. It is so easy to set up. It is the thing that actually belongs on somebody's desk who's trying out 3D printing. Because all of the hassle, it doesn't exist with this device. I'm pretty sure things can go wrong and maybe you set something up and it doesn't really work for you and you have to try again and maybe fiddle with the settings but the way that this arrived here the way that it's that it's set up i was printing within 10 minutes of being able of being able of turning it on what what else do you want this is um, i think this is the absolute beginner's device and at the price you can't go wrong with this you really can't and the quality is super the print bed eh, 220 by 220 millimeters is sort of small nowadays but still for somebody starting out for somebody who wants to get going quickly for somebody who needs this because he has to do something with a 3d printer this thing is perfect and I'm Pretty sure the SE in the Ender 3 V3 SE stands for super easy because that's exactly what it is. This thing is super easy to use and set up. So thank you again for geekbuying.com for hooking up with this 3D printer. Um, also thank you to Creality for making something so simple and so great. Um, if you like this video or if you want to go out and uh, actually buy this printer because you need something that just works um, there is a uh, link in the uh, description of the video um, it's an affiliate link but I do not make any money off of that link it's just for tracking purposes and of course it helps my rep so uh, I get more of these things that I can review for you um, that I can open and break so you don't have to and lastly if you like this video please consider sus subscribing um, leave a like because well we're not all working for the almighty algorithm and um, let's please it that said thank you very much for watching and uh, bye bye